Morning guys, how's it going? Yuri here. It's uh, just about 8 in the morning and uh, I'm here just outside my house for a couple minutes from my home and it's absolutely freezing. It's supposed to be the end of March, springtime, but it's still really cold. I'm bundled up. I got the toque, the scarf, the Canada goose on. I'm a little bit chilly and uh, I'm going to do my little Ask Yuri video from out here today because this is one of the spots where I love to take my dogs for a walk. And we got Layla here who's a crazy and Jax who's my, uh, my sweetie. They look very nice and cuddly, but believe me, if, the, if another dog or somebody else comes by, you'll see what happens. Anyways, um, here's a little kind of panoramic of why I like this walk so much. It's just awesome. We have uh, the lake right there. Uh, it's really just a great way to start the day. Really serene. There's no one out here. It's like, I mean, it's like your own oasis. It's awesome. That's why I love not being in the city anymore. So anyways, um, I wanted to take this opportunity to do the Ask Yuri Live for Ask Yuri session from out here today. And I wanted to talk about two things. The first thing is a question that I always keep getting. I don't even know if that's proper English. But it's, um, Yuri, when's the best time of day to work out? Okay, well, that, that's a, it really depends, right? And I don't really care what the research shows in terms of, you know, if it's best to work out in the afternoon or in the morning or at night. From my perspective, all that matters is when is the best time for you to work out. So if you work out, if you can work out, no problem, your best workout is at 5 in the morning, and that's the only time you can get it in, well then work out at 5 in the morning. For me personally, I'm sleeping at 5 in the morning, and if I get up at 6.37, I don't feel like working out, usually. Now this changes sometimes, I usually try to get my day started with a walk like this, kind of get my body moving, kind of wake up a little bit. Um, I also do a lot of yoga in the morning, so I'm not a lot, I mean like, you know, a 15 to 20 minute session, but for me that works. My best workouts, usually mid-afternoon. So for you, you need to find out what that time of day is, because if you're going to work out at a time of day where you're not able to push yourself or really make any uh, substantial progress in your workouts, then there's really no point. I mean, this is obviously better than working out sitting on the couch. But you want to consider what's the best time of day for you. It's the same thing with work, right? What's the most productive time of day for you to get your stuff done and kind of use that magic time for yourself. So that's what I would recommend is, is find this best day of time for you and stick to that for your workouts. I still suggest if you can get something done in the morning, it's really going to benefit you from a metabolism standpoint. Um, it'll just, uh, a metabolism standpoint in the sense that you get your body moving, you kind of rev up your engine. But at the same time, you also set yourself up for a great day because you've already done something positive, active, and it's just a great way to start your day. So um, that's a very simple answer. I keep getting the question, so hopefully that answers the question for you. Now the second question I wanted to answer here was uh, the notion of vitamin D and vitamin D supplementation. Now obviously I'm going to talk about vitamin D because, well, there's the sun, and vitamin D is known as a sunshine vitamin. So why is it called the sunshine vitamin? Because the UVB rays from the sun, they actually produce vitamin D or a precursor to vitamin D in the skin. It then goes through a chain of events to lead to vitamin D uh, creation in the kidneys and then it goes and does its stuff in the body. Now vitamin D is really important uh, because what it does is it actually helps to regulate, among other things, calcium in the body. So it actually increases calcium absorption from the intestines, it decreases the amount of calcium you lose in the urine. And um, it actually, interestingly enough, increases calcium breakdown from your bones. But don't worry, the calcium that it increases from your intestinal kind of intake uh, is greater than what it breaks down from the bones. So you have a net increase in, uh, in calcium retention. So anyways, a vitamin D is important because we don't get enough of it. 40% of North Americans and probably most people in the Northern Hemisphere are deficient in vitamin D. And that's a problem because vitamin D is associated with like rickets and stuff like that, where you have the bone of the legs and kids. Um, obviously we don't see that all the time, but there are more fundamental reasons why vitamin D deficiency is a problem. It's associated with heart disease, obesity, cancer, uh, and overall health. So we need to be getting enough vitamin D. Now the question is, how much vitamin D is enough? Well, that's a really interesting question that has changed over the years. And what they originally recommended has changed now. And the reason for that is because the recommendation now, if you're anywhere from 1 to 70 years old, is about eight, uh, sorry, uh, 600 IUs per day, international units per day. If you're 70 and over, it's about 800. 
And the reason for that is because as you get older, your skin is not able to manufacture vitamin D as well, as readily, and as well your liver and kidneys don't function to convert uh, the different forms of vitamin D to the more active forms. So as you get older, you need more. Um, now the question is, what's the best source? Do you get it from the sun, or do you get it through supplementation? Because really dietary, through foods, vitamin D is not, I mean, unless you're eating massive amounts of really exotic fish, in most cases we're not getting the vitamin D. Now, one good source of vitamin D, now this again is up to debate, is cod liver oil, right? So vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin, it'll be stored in the in, in a lot of fat tissue in the body as well as some of the, in some of the liver. So when you eat any kind of pate or liver based foods, you will be getting vitamin D as well as vitamin A. So that's one option, cod liver oil, one teaspoon gives you about 400 IUs, so use it with that in with that in mind because you don't want to be overdoing that, okay, because one teaspoon is almost your daily limit. Uh, if you get some good sun exposure, then you know, you'd probably add that. Now the problem is that we're not getting the sun exposure. I personally believe, um, I try to be as natural as possible and look at, okay, well, if, if since the beginning of time, what, what did man do? stayed outside, was generally naked, you know, had a robe around, like, as we see in the movies, like this loin cloth, and that was pretty much about it. Who knows, right? So, most of the day, they were exposed to the sun, full body exposure, they were getting the vitamin D they needed, we're not getting that, we're covered up in jackets and scarves and toques, and right now, maybe 1% of my skin is exposed to the sun, so I'm not getting the vitamin D that I need. So, what's the recommendation? Well, if you're a white Caucasian male or female like myself, obviously I'm not a female, but, but if you have light colored skin, you're gonna need less sun than if you have dark colored skin, okay? So in general, if you're, again, if you're, I'm gonna just randomly say if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, above, let's say, if you're north of uh, the top line of California, right? So somewhere like mid-states, mid-United States and above that, you're looking at ex full sun exposure, so arms, legs, preferably chest, um, and head about two to three times a week, 15 to 20 minutes without sunscreen, okay? Above that, then you want to put the clothes on, put the sunscreen on, and then, you know, avoid the sun. Because SPF 8 will reduce your body's ability to produce vitamin D by about 95%, okay? So if you're wearing sunscreen, you're going to nullify any vitamin D benefits from the sun. So give yourself a couple minutes just unexposed or un uncovered without sunscreen, and then put it on afterwards. Now, if you're a darker, the darker you are, the more sun you're going to need, okay? So if you're an African American, you're gonna need about 40 minutes, about four times, three to four times the amount of sun as a Caucasian. That's just because the pigment of your skin um, requires, it's almost like a shield against the sun, and that's just developed evolutionary-wise um, over time. So you need more sun exposure to get the same amount of vitamin D as somebody who has lighter skin. So hopefully that's answered the vitamin D stuff. Now the vitamin D stuff is really, really interesting and I go into a lot more detail about this in Super Nutrition Academy. So if you want to know more about vitamin D, vitamin A, all the other important vitamins and minerals, uh, you want to check out Super Nutrition Academy because it's really awesome to understand this stuff, what to look for in supplements, how it works in your body, all the deficiency, toxicity stuff, really, really fascinating um, kind of investigations into understanding how vitamins and minerals work and if supplementation is really required. So um, that is that is the topic for today. Now, well, just before I finish, I, I want to try to zoom in. I want to talk about one really cool thing here. Now, I don't know if you can see this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just, we're going to continue walking here because I want to show you something amazing. And this has nothing to do with vitamin D or workouts. It actually has everything to do with persistence and never giving up. Now, so I'm totally off topic. I usually do that. I kind of go on tangents and stuff. But in the wintertime, this lake totally freezes over. And it freezes over almost overnight because it's so shallow. So one of the cool things is that in the wintertime, I'm able to take the dogs for a walk like, like on the lake. And we just walk for miles. It's awesome. So... As the lake started to defrost, it would actually defrost or melt, and then it would freeze again. And what was interesting is when I was taking the dogs for a walk down this path, I started to notice something really, really interesting. So we're gonna have a look at something that I find absolutely mind blowing, and it's the power of nature. And if you look at nature as something that 
I mean, you can't get in the way of nature. Okay? You just Nature does its thing no matter what. So what happened in the winter here was, this is the shoreline. It's obviously kind of a little bit beat up now, and it's just kind of getting into spring mode. But what's amazing is that all this, this elevated surface here, this elevated grass, was all level before the ice melted. So what was happening is that the ice, obviously this is water now, but a couple weeks ago the ice was little, literally sheets of ice and the sheer force of that ice was driving up the side of the shoreline here. And here's something even crazier. Now we were just standing over at that gazebo over there. It's kind of nice and level and all you know good structured. This one here was totally uprooted because of the movement of the ice. It's almost like how the mountains are formed geologically when the, the plates, the tectonic plates shift and they literally will just move continents uh, upwards and that's how mountains are created and the exact same thing happened here where none of this like this was all flat in the winter time in last summer and now look at this like it's come off the stilts right it's like the thing has come off the stilts it's not even right so look at that elevation like it's totally come off what it was meant to be okay so why am i and i think Jax is going to jump in the water. Okay, so why am I showing you this? Well, because I'm fascinated with nature. But I also think there's a lot of lessons to learn from it in the sense that nature never gives up, right? If something stands in its way, if, if, if ice wants to move and a shoreline is in its, in, its, in its way, well, too bad shoreline, you're going to be getting uprooted. Same thing with a plant. If a plant wants to dig down and really get its roots nice and deep to get minerals, it will go through rock. It will literally shatter rock in the soil. That's power. So what's the message here? Never give up, right? As I talk about in a lot of my workouts, NGU, never give up, never give up, never give up. And that's a great lesson that we can learn from, uh, from a, a lot of different things in nature. So with that said, I'm going to stop this video. I'm going to continue my walk probably go home now because I'm a little bit cold and uh, yeah hopefully this information has helped you out maybe inspired you at the end and uh, I look forward to talking to you soon